Hello and welcome back to Sheffield Science Videos. In this video we are going to show you a cool little effect that is used to improve metal properties in both industry and the lab. In most metal productions the material properties are often dramatically changed not by varying what the metal is made of but by changing how it's processed. One method is called annealing which involves heating the metal to a temperature below its melting point for minutes or even hours or days. The effect of annealing can simply be shown with a spoon. When we bend the stainless steel spoon back and forth, it becomes stiffer the more we do so. In material science terms, this is called work hardening. When we apply a force during bending, we create dislocations, which are effectively a misalignment of atoms, in the metal. The metal is able to bend through the movement of these dislocations. However, they can also block each other from moving at all, making the metal stiffer. So when we bend the spoon several times, we are creating thousands of dislocations, many of which are now blocking each other. This increases the metal stiffness and is the basic theory of work hardening. For the first part of our demonstration, we will now count how many times we can bend the spoon before it snaps. The buildup of dislocations changes the metal's properties to becoming more brittle, and our spoon finally snaps when the metal has become simply too brittle. Here, we managed to bend the spoon 17 times. Next, we are going to work hard on another spoon by first bending it 10 times, and thereby introducing many dislocations at the bend. If we now heat this other spoon up, after having bent it back and forth a few times, we should see the effects of work hardening become undone by annealing. The heat supplies the atoms, and effectively the dislocations, with so much energy that the dislocations can rearrange themselves, move past each other, or even disappear completely. Annealing essentially resets the atoms in the metal. When we now bend the spoon back and forth, it feels much less stiff and much softer. It will also take much more bending until it breaks, since we must first generate all of the dislocations we had already produced by bending the spoon before annealing. As you can see, we now manage to bend it another 15 times. Together with the bends carried out before annealing, that's 25, and almost 10 more than the first not annealed spoon. Thanks for watching this video. To find out more about what you just saw, check out the description and follow the links below. To see more from Sheffield Science videos, check out our channel and don't forget to subscribe.